Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today I'm giving you guys an A to Z detailed Facebook ad strategy to test and scale your Shopify dropshipping products in 2021. I hope you're excited. I certainly am. A lot of you guys have been asking for this in the comments of my other videos. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So guys, definitely get some pen and paper ready to take some notes because I'm going to take you guys through the A to Z Facebook ad strategy that you can use to test and scale products efficiently. And it's going to get a little bit complicated, a little bit technical sometimes. So I definitely recommend that you take some notes throughout the video. If you haven't watched it yet, definitely watch my previous video on how to analyze your Facebook ads metrics, because that's going to be very related to what we're going to be talking today. And you should definitely consider both of these videos together. As with the other video, it's very important that we get our columns set up before we get started, because if we don't have this set up properly, we're not going to be able to see the correct data. We're going to be looking at data that doesn't matter. Um, and we're going to be um, making incorrect decisions because we won't be looking at the right numbers so make sure that you just pause the video copy this column setup here into your facebook ads it's very simple just click your columns then go to customize columns and copy this exact same setup now first we need to talk about this testing campaign now you guys have asked for a scaling strategy but i didn't want to go into scaling without talking about testing first because i felt like that wouldn't be very helpful to you guys it would probably lead you to scale things that can't be scaled. So I decided to make a longer video and talk about testing first and then scaling. Now testing is all about finding the right audience to match your offer. What makes a successful product test? Well, the product is going to be successful if the offer is a good match for your audience. So on one hand, you have the offer, which is your pricing, your product, essentially what you're giving your customers, what you're offering your customers. The price, of course, is one of the most important elements of your offer because the same offer can be successful or unsuccessful depending on the price. Now, this is not the objective of the video today. We're not talking about product research or your offer or anything like that. We're already assuming that you have a product selected, that you have a good offer in place with a good price that is not too greedy. So we're just going to go and move on to the testing of the audience because our offer is already selected. At least we're assuming that for this video. Now, the audience is the people who you're going to show your ad to, the people who we're going to be offering your product to. So a few things to consider about the audience is is there a demand for the product does your audience want the product are you showing the ads to the right people are you targeting people who potentially will be interested or are you targeting people that are completely not interested in your offer is your marketing angle good or are you using a very saturated marketing angle that is very similar to what everyone else is doing these are all important questions and these are the factors that will go in to a testing strategy on Facebook ads. So it's very important to have a good testing structure or else you're either going to be spending a lot more than you need to take conclusions on a certain product or you're just going to be getting irrelevant data because your testing structure is not very efficient. Now, before we get started with the actual testing structure, I want to mention these very important notes here, okay? So number one, a great testing strategy does not save a bad product. If your product is bad, your strategy can be the best testing strategy in the entire world. It's not going to save a bad product because if people don't care about the product, if there is no demand for the product, nothing's going to happen. You know, people are still not going to buy your product. A great product can work even with a terrible strategy. So that's also something very important to take into consideration. If you have a very good product and you don't know what you're doing, you're just running some ads, maybe the product takes off because the product is very good because people just want to buy it. This doesn't make it okay though, because you're still making some sales. Maybe you're breaking even with an amazing product where you could be making a ton of money. You know, that is the thing. If you have a great product and a bad strategy, you're going to be leaving a lot of money on the table. You could be making a lot more money, but you don't because your testing strategy, your scaling strategy are bad and they're just not taking full advantage of the product that you have. So definitely take these things into consideration. If this sounds like you, then maybe you've been in one of these situations. Maybe you had a very good strategy, but your products just don't click. Or maybe you even made a, a bunch of sales because your product is amazing, but you couldn't get to the next level because your strategy just wasn't there. You didn't have a good scaling strategy to back up your great product. Okay, so moving on here, the testing campaign is all about testing variables. And the variables that we test are creatives, audience, and ad copy. 
When we test creatives, we'll look for the creatives that give you the best results. So people may be interested in the product and they may click regardless of how good your creatives are. But if you have a very good creative, there's going to be a higher CTR. So people are going to click more than they would with a bad creative. And if you get more clicks, you probably get cheaper clicks. If you get cheaper clicks, you have a lower advertising cost. Your cost per acquisition is lower, so your profit margin just increases. Of course, we need to find the right audience. If we're not showing the product to the right audience, we're not going to go anywhere. So interest targeting, which is the case on Facebook, is going to be our quintessential element in our testing strategy, because that's what it's all about finding the right people to sell your product to. And of course, we need to split test different ad copies. We could do that in our stage one, which is gonna be our creative testing stage, but we're not gonna do it because that would make the creative testing stage very, very extensive and as a consequence, very expensive. And this strategy is aimed for people on lower budgets. So because I know a lot of you guys are on lower budget and you're just trying to find out the best strategy to be able to test without spending too much money, I took that into account when I created this video. So this testing strategy definitely requires a decent budget, but is not meant to be a high budget strategy. In this way, you'll be able to use the budget that you have with the maximum efficiency. So you use just about enough to be able to get good and reliable results, but you don't go overboard making sure that you've tested every little thing because that would require a higher budget. So it's a little bit of a trade-off here between spending just the amount that you need to spend and getting a reliable amount of data. Now, stage one is gonna be creative testing. What we're gonna do in stage one is we're gonna test creatives. So first, what you're gonna need is 10 different creatives, some pictures, some videos you can use some different types of pictures you can use pictures for a carousel just make sure that you have enough content to create 10 different creatives between picture ads video ads and carousel ads you're going to need one ad copy and one headline again we're not going to test ad copy and headlines just yet we're going to leave that to the scaling phase so you don't have to commit as much of your budget to just testing the creatives the structure for the creative test is going to be one campaign abo campaign 10 ad sets and 10 different creatives. For the campaign objective, we're gonna choose engagement. We're not gonna do conversions because of the budget. So if we had a high budget, we could test creatives with conversions traffic, which is more reliable, but it is more expensive. So with engagement, what you get is you essentially get to show your ads to more people for a lower cost. And this is enough if you just want to see which one of your ads is resonating the best with your target audience. We're going to go with engagement. We're going to go e-packet countries and we're going to select one broad interest that is related to your product. And we're going to use the same interest in every single one of these 10 ad sets. Remember, we're not testing the interest yet. We're just seeing which creative resonates the best with your audience. Again, when you're setting up the creative, we use same ad copy, same headline. We only change the creative itself because that is the variable that we're isolating. That's the variable that we're testing. We're gonna run this until 5,000 impressions. So we stop this campaign when we have 5,000 impressions on each one of your ad sets. Now, 5,000 impressions might seem like a lot for conversions traffic, but on engagement traffic, you will get this very, very quickly and not even spending a lot of money. When you have 5,000 impressions, we're going to select the top two creatives based on this hierarchy of factors that we have here. Your best two creatives with the highest ROAS. Now, this is unlikely because with engagement traffic, it is unlikely that you'll get sales straight away. So if you do have sales and you have more than one because one sale can just be a lucky sale, if you have that, if you have more than one sale, then yes, that is probably going to be your top performing creatives, but that's unlikely. You know, engagement traffic doesn't usually return a lot of sales. If you don't have sales, that's okay. We're gonna get the creative with the best CPC. And if you have two creatives with similar CPC, the deciding factor will be the CTR. Now, when we have our best two creatives selected, we're going to move on to the audience testing. Now, for the audience testing, before you get started, you need to brainstorm 10 different interests related to your product. So just go on Google, do a little bit of research about your audience, what your target audience likes, what your target audience is interested in, and brainstorm 10 different interests related to your product. Now, very important thing though, don't make it all the same. If you, you know, if your product is a kitchen product, don't make your interests like kitchen, kitchen products kitchen accessories, kitchen this, kitchen that, you know, don't just go on the same marketing angle over and over again. Make sure that you use different angles because this is all about testing your audience and you want to test different audiences. You don't want to do 
10 interests, they are going to be pretty much overlapping and you're just showing your ads to the same people. Now for the structure, what we want to go is one CBO campaign with a minimum spend on each ad set. So what you do is you do a CBO campaign with $75 a day and a minimum spend of $5 on each ad set. CBO stands for campaign budget optimization. It's a setting that is available on the campaign level when you're setting up your ads. Make sure to turn that on at $75 a day. But because we're testing audiences, we don't want Facebook to completely and absolutely decide where to put the money. So on each ad set, we're going to set a minimum spend of $5. This comes up on the ad set settings and the budget section, and you just need to insert a minimum spend of $5. So this will tell Facebook that Facebook can do whatever it wants with the $75 a day that you give it on the CBO, but it always has to spend at least $5 each day on each ad set. This will mean that Facebook will have two and a half dollars per ad set to distribute in whichever way it thinks it's going to do the best. Now, this is not going to be engagement traffic. This is going to be conversions. Remember to set your campaign for conversions, optimize for purchase, e-packet countries again, and 10 different interests. So one ad set with one interest. That is the variable that we're testing now. So that is the variable that we're isolating. We're making one interest in each ad set, and we're going to see which of these audiences respond the best to our product. Now you run this campaign for three days. If you get zero sales after three days, just switch products. You're testing 10 different interests. If you've done everything correctly up to this point and you still have no sales after three days, just turn it off replace the product it's most likely a product that is going to be very hard to market and you might as well just save your money and move on to do a different product if you have at least one ad set with a positive ROAS, then replace your unprofitable ad sets with a new interest. So turn off everything that's unprofitable and replace them with new interests. Because if you have at least one ad set with a positive ROAS, that's a good sign. We need to keep testing more interests to find other audiences that can work well for us. Keep running for three more days and see if you can find other ad sets that can consistently make sales. And when you have ad sets that are consistently making sales and staying above your break-even ROAS being profitable, that's that's when it's time to scale. So when to scale? We're going to scale when you have five ad sets that have remained profitable and making sales consistently for over a week at least. This tells you that these ad sets have the potential to be scaled, that it wasn't just a bunch of lucky sales and that audience actually really likes your product. So for scaling, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new CBO campaign and we're gonna duplicate your best performing ad sets from your testing campaign into your CBO. So it's gonna be five ad sets in one CBO campaign at $100 a day. Of course, conversions traffic optimized for purchase, e-packet countries and the best performing interests, one per ad set. So your best performing interests from your testing campaign are going into the scaling campaign. By doing this, you're putting your best audiences into one CBO. So that's when you start having a higher profit because you start allocating most of your ads budget to your top performing interests. But don't forget that you need to keep testing new interests and new creatives in the back. So never stop your testing campaign always keep testing interests and creatives in the back because your scaling interests your top five interests your first good five interests are not going to last forever and when they die out you need to replace them with new ones keep making new cbo campaigns with winning interests as you find them and scale your cbos vertically by increasing the budget by 30 percent every seven days as long as they remain profitable of course so this is our blueprint from a to z to test the product and scale it with Facebook ads. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this was useful to you. As always, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified every time that a new video goes live. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.